When I say the word kebab, what probably comes to mind is a messy donut kebab or some sort of grilled late night mystery meat. But there's a whole world out there of kebabs and koftas that don't come with a side serving of greasy regret. Today I'm bringing you two unique and wonderful kebabs which I think might just change your opinion. Best of all, these are really quick to make and they'd be perfect for a fantastic weeknight dinner. First up we have kebab belkaras or cherry kebab. And before anyone fights me, this dish is eaten in Armenia, Syria, Turkey and Lebanon. It's basically cherry sized kebabs cooked in a tangy and sour cherry sauce and the result is one of the nicest, tangiest, moistest dishes I've ever tried. Hashtag tangang. The second recipe we're making is a Turkish dish called soğan kebabi, which is onion stuffed with meat and cooked with a tangy pomegranate sauce. Put together they make for a fantastic tasting kofta and once again they are tangang approved. Starting with the cherry kebab, you'll take 500 grams of minced lamb or beef and to it you'll add in one grated onion. Now this is the key ingredient that keeps kebabs moist but don't add too much otherwise the mix will fall apart. After grating your onion and crying tears of regret, place your grated onion in a towel and squeeze it to remove the excess moisture. This was about 1 medium onion or 70 grams of onion that I added to the bowl with 1 teaspoon of salt. To season I added half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of baharat or seven spice, a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon and a quarter teaspoon of Aleppo pepper flakes. Now get in there with your clean hands and knead this together just like dough until everything is thoroughly combined. After three minutes of kneading I had this slightly sticky meat texture and that will be perfect for forming it into balls. Let it rest for five minutes on your countertop then you can start portioning it out into small pieces. Rather than aiming for a specific weight, take clumps slightly larger than a cherry and once portioned out, roll them into smooth miniature meatballs. This batch made about 44 which will be plenty for 4 people. To cook these, take a heavy bottomed pan and add 1 tablespoon of vegetable oil and heat it over medium high heat. Add in about half of your meatballs and allow them to sear for about 2 minutes before tossing the pan and flipping them over. Let them sear for about 2 more minutes on the other side then pull them out and set them aside while you do the same thing with the second batch. When all of those are done, add in 2 medium onions chopped to a medium or small dice. Saute these until they start to soften and if you need to pour in a little water to deglaze the pan. Cook the onions for about 3-4 to four minutes until soft and then you'll add in some sour cherries. Now these are preserved sour cherries which are a common ingredient in Persian and Middle Eastern cuisine but if you can get your hands on some fresh sour cherries then feel free to use them. This was 200 grams of sour cherries and you better remove the stone from each one if you don't fancy breaking a tooth. After removing the stones I was left with about 120 grams of flesh which all went into the pan. Apart from that I also added half a teaspoon of Aleppo pepper, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, a quarter teaspoon of ginger and half a teaspoon of salt. Finally I added a small stick of cinnamon which you could replace with a quarter teaspoon of powder. Mix this all together well then you'll pour in 400 milliliters of sour cherry juice. Turn the heat up to high and bring your pan to a boil then turn your heat to medium high and let it cook for about 5 minutes. Once that time is up your sauce should have reduced quite nicely and you should taste it for sourness. Our sauce was perfect but if yours needs more acid then you can add in some lemon juice. Add the little meatballs back to the pan and give them a toss to coat then pour in another 200 milliliters of juice and let this reduce one more time for about 10 minutes. When the time is up you should have glossy and sticky balls like this and the sauce should have a wonderful coating consistency. To plate these take some lavash or other flatbread which is cut into triangles and lay them with the point facing up inside a bowl. Once you've covered the whole thing, pour the sour cherry kebab into the bowl with all of the sour sauce. To garnish sprinkle some chopped parsley on top and then add on some toasted pine nuts or almond flakes. I must say this is quite a striking dish and it's one of those things you could easily make in bulk for a party. Personally it was just right for my tastes and I'm officially granting this the Tangang seal of approval. The second dish is no less impressive and it's even easier to make. Once again we'll start with 500 grams of minced lamb or beef and I'm not going to add any onion to this one. First thing goes half a teaspoon each of Aleppo pepper and black pepper. Next you'll add one teaspoon of salt and then knead this for about 3-4 to four minutes into a sticky mess. Let that hang out for a few minutes on your counter while you prep the onions. In this bowl I've got 1.5kg of small to medium onions and these will be the perfect size for stuffing. 
Top and tail the onions, then remove the skin and the first layer of onion, which can be really dry and papery. To stuff the onions, you'll just slice them in half, and then you'll take a bunch of the meat and squish it between both halves. Try get your meat to about 1cm thick and smooth the edges of it so you get a nice end product. Place the stuffed onions into a baking dish and this recipe was enough for 19 stuffed onions. Preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius and then place the tray in there to bake for 20 minutes. While it's in there we'll prepare the pomegranate glaze which will give the kebab its signature flavour. First thing you'll need is 200ml of stock and I was out of fresh stock so I just used half a stock cube. Once it's dissolved, add in 60ml of pomegranate molasses and if you don't have any, then check out my pomegranate molasses video. Next up was 1 tablespoon of red pepper paste and if you can't get hold of this, then replace it with 1 tablespoon of tomato paste. Finally, add a quarter teaspoon each of salt and black pepper before mixing this into a smooth glaze. Once the 20 minutes are up, pour the glaze evenly over your onions, making sure to hit each one with plenty of that sticky sauce. Place the tray back into your oven for 10 more minutes, but this time turn your grill or broiler to high. This time when you take it out, pour some of the sauce into a jug and then pour it back over the onions for the final glazing. Put it back in for a final 5-10 to 10 minutes and when yours looks like this, they are ready to eat. To decorate, I garnished them with some parsley and some pomegranate seeds, then I went ahead and enjoyed them with some white rice. The onions and the pomegranate sauce make the dish sweet and tangy, but it's a great contrast to the flavour and texture of the meat. Now, let's see which dish I liked more. That was not what I was expecting. The flavour on both those kebabs is mind-blowing. The cherry one is packed full of sweet and tart flavours. It goes perfectly with the meat, and the flavour combination just makes it perfect for winter. The onion one is amazingly sweet. It's kind of like an onion jam around the kofta with a fruity pomegranate tang. If you love sour and tangy fruits, you'll love these kebabs.